Hi guys and welcome to a best of five series between myself, who's going to be in control of the High Elves in this first round, up against Ninja Pingvin, who's going to be in control of the Mighty Skaven. So we were doing a pick and ban system and this is the first matchup we had, so let's get it underway. And it's going to be played on Mirror Woods. So we're kind of just doing standard rules, there was nothing actually set too much, but we were trying to take it fairly seriously. And I hadn't played in a couple of weeks at this point, so I was a little bit nervous coming into the game, I hadn't played competitively for a very long time and haven't really played the game much at all recently. But let's see what uh, my little rusty mind managed to come up with. So for the front line, we have gone cheap and cheerful with four units of spearmen. Three in the front line and one covering this right-hand flank. These guys are brilliant in this matchup. They hold the line for ages against Skaven. Do really good and they allow our back line to do the actual heavy lifting. In the back line, we do have one, two, three, four units of Lothran Seaguard, who I really like in this matchup. Very good at dealing with Skaven skirmishers who try and like get around the back and hop on top of them. They can fight in combat. They have that little bit of anti-large against Rat Ogres and so forth. And they're fairly decent archers as well. We've also got one unit of basic archers with uh, two chevrons. Now, just mass cheap archer fire is so good in this matchup at taking down, you know, the hordes of filthy Skaven. And uh, yeah, it should be really good overall. So up in the sky, we do have a Flames Fire Phoenix, able to drop his fire poops wherever he goes. And it's just basically going to be an absolute tank. Really... Um, going to be trying to just disrupt the Skaven, causing terror of course is very nice as well, and getting over there and just being a general menace. Now for our leadership we have gone for a Mage of Light here, which is someone I don't often use, but I was thinking in this matchup, Brino's Time Walk could be really nice on the Spearman to turn them into actually, you know, lawnmower killer machines and be able to get through wave after wave of Skaven. We do have a Banishment in case my opponent blobs up, we have a Net of Amantok and a Shem's Burning Gaze in case he has any large nasty monsters. Now accompanying our Lord, we do have a Noble on a Steed, pretty damn decent combatant, also very good at dealing with any large foes my opponent brings, and we do have Tyrion as our main leader riding into battle and he has all his buffs including the Sun Fang, his beautiful flaming sword there. Over in the distance we also have one very sneaky unit of Illyrian Reavers, can be trying to pop in the back and hop on top of siege equipment, Gisales, rattling gunners, all those nasty units. So let's have a little look at Ninja's army. In the front line, he has three units of Clan Rats with shields as a first kind of buffer, which is quite nice to see. And on either flank there, he also has two units of Clan Rats Spearmen with shields protecting a Warp Lightning Cannon, which is you know, going to be trying to pick out Dragon Princes, any large monsters that I've brought, or those high-value targets like Phoenix Guard and so forth. Now the back is where it gets a little bit scary for me and a bit more elite for the Skaven. We do in fact have the regiment of renowned Storm Vermin Hellbirds, which are the Council Guard. Not only do they look incredibly badass, but they are unbreakable, which is so invaluable for Skaven, who really do struggle with leadership. He's also gone for one, two, three, four units of Storm Vermin with Sword and Shield, who should be able to do fairly decent up against my nice, cheap and cheerful Spearman. In the back we have two units of Skaven Slave Slingers, just clearly looking for anyone who's going to be trying to lurk in the trees and sneak up on my opponent's army. For his leadership, he does have a Plague Priest, and let's check out what he has brought. He's brought Plague, Wither, which is quite nice, and Pestilence Breath. And for his Lord, he has gone for Queek Headstaker, who I haven't faced too often. Often you'll see Skrulk, um, or Itic Claw, but Queek Headtaker, fantastic duelist. Should be good to see him up against uh, Tyrion. So let's get this battle underway. So as you can see, we're moving up quite slowly here, using our Lords just moving them over to the left and over to the right, trying to distract his warp lightning cannon and make it waste some shots. Our Phoenix has flown really far right, um, around the right hand flank here, just to get out of range of that very nasty cannon. We're moving up the Illyrian Reavers. So at this point I've managed to spot these Skaven Slave Singers, so what I'm trying to do is bring Tyrion round this flank, who looks like he's also dropping a Sunfang down on these tasty Storm Vermin. He's going to be coming round this flank and trying to assist the Illyrian Reavers at driving off these two skirmishers as quickly as possible for my opponent can respond and as you can see a big sun fang come down the side my opponent does spot it and manages to move out of the way but still some decent damage on that second unit of storm vermin our forces are moving up now into archery range and realistically here yes he has a cannon but i have the range advantage he's going to be shooting at spearmen and sea guard not getting too much value so we're just going to absolutely blitz this front line of clan rats and then systematically just move forward do the same to the second line move forward do the same to the third line and in the back we have managed to hop on top of those skirmishers with some Illyrian reavers and Tyrion, tearing them apart quite quickly there and the phoenix is flying in the trees just being a bit of a pain and kind of always trying to stay in the back of my opponent's mind 
Now, the clan rats are trying to force their way through back onto the archers here. So we do try and close the noose with the spinning, but they are forcing their way through, spam clicking, I assume, to try and get them back onto those archers. But they're just coming into a concave of Lothran Seaguard on either flanks, spinning and hitting them in the rear, so they're not going to be around too much longer. Looks like we've already driven off one unit over on this flank. So the Phoenix just flying up and down the line, getting ready to drop some poos. And uh, Quick does come charging in the back here, trying to rescue this backline situation. Tyrion pops all his buffs, hops on Quick, and we even have the Noble coming in as well. But he does respond with a Dwarf Gouge as well. But he's taking huge damage. But in return, he does pop down a trophy head on Tyrion. And you can see his health just absolutely tanking here. As this is going on, the Flame Side Phoenix does swoop along that back line, dropping all his little fire poops and some really nice early damage to these Storm Vermin. Thinks about going in, but then decides to back off. So as you can see, we have managed to win this backline engagement against Quick Headtaker, Tyrion taking him down, but at what cost? He has lost so much health, but he is very, very quick. If, as long as he can dodge those warp blinding cannon shots, he's immediately going to be able to escort Quick off the battlefield. So overall, really good backline um Kind of engagement for me. Looks like we are dropping a banishment down on top of this storm. Vermin. My opponent once again manages to notice, but unfortunately for him, he walks in the direction of the banishment, which just seems to follow these Skaven around, gain huge value and really wrecking that unit of storm vermin, making them not next to useless, but fairly close. So I'm a bit unfortunate there as he did actually manage to spot it. And as you can see, we've defeated that front line. We're going to be moving up now into archery range of his warp lightning cannon and decide to take that guy offline. We're in no rush though. We're not trying to force this front line engagement too quickly as we're quite comfortable picking off his lord in the back here and taking apart these clan rats and the kind of one or two units which are coming back to try and rescue this situation. So all the archer fire coming in now, as you can see, getting those rear attacks on the warp blinding cannon does instantly break them. And now we're going to be switching our target to some of these more heavily armoured storm vermin who are getting pinned in by some nice cheap and cheerful spearmen. Who just, you know, aren't going to get too many kills, but they're doing their job, holding that line and allows us to do some decent damage. We do have some returning clan rats, but I don't think they're going to make it into combat against these Lothran Seaguard who are just going to be no scoping them from point blank range. And that's going to be, as you can see, the majority of this battle is us just shooting and pinning them down with spearmen while the Noble and Tyrion just float around the back line hunting down routing units and being a general pain. Now Flames Fire Phoenix does come for a nice rear attack on these Storm Vermin now trying to rescue these beleaguered Spearmen and as you can see instantly manages to tear out them and they're merely going to get chased off the battlefield or at least brought out of the battle for now. More Collect the Storm Vermin trying to force their way back into this archery line, but another unit of Spearmen just merely walks up and plugs the gap. The Mage of Light is here as well to inspire the troops, and that range firepower is really starting to take a toll on these poor little clan rats. In the distance, we have some Illyrian Reavers chasing down routing units, doing a nice cheeky charge into some Storm Vermin before disengaging and chasing down this Warp Lightning Cannon crew, just getting that nice value with a very beat up unit of Illyrian Reavers there. Noble in the back just clean up some clan rats, not the best um, use of his time, but Overall, not too bad. Big Plague does come down, but luckily it managed to just about spot it in time and force my Lothran Seagarth back and this other unit forward. Luckily, both of us today actually managed to spot a lot of the big spells coming down. Again, he managed to spot a Banishment, but a little bit slow this time. I do catch some of those Council Guard and break off a unit of Storm Vermin there. Be a little bit of Friendly Fire Spearmen, but they're there to die, so it's fine. In the back line, we see the Noble chasing off units, and Tyrion is in fact just chasing off some more clan rats as well, just ensuring that nothing can come back and be a pain late game. I don't want any Skaven rallying. We have them on the back foot, and that's how I'd like to keep them. Some clan rats have managed to force way into the back, but Lothran and Seaguard are decent melee combatants, and they should be able to win that engagement fairly comfortably as we just move up with the rest of our army, and now we're focusing down those Storm Vermin. These are the elite troops that we really need to take down, and yes, they have shields, yes, there's many of them, and it's not the best target for archers, but this amount of firepower coming in, you can see the HP just drop in there, and especially now they've turned to their flank. Their shields aren't going to be as useful as these spearmen do engage them from the high ground. We should be able to pin them in and do some really nice damage. Council Guard trying to protect the Plague Priest, now that Quake is dead, his only bit of leadership, which is clinging this army together, and as you can see, power balance very heavily in my favour now, but I still am outnumbered, but of course every elf is worth multiple Skaven. We have another spell coming down here, I noticed it, but just a little too late, and it does do, you know, not too bad damage, but I managed to move out of the way, and it's a stationary spell, so... You know, a bit unfortunate there. Both of us have just been so on point with managing to spot when these spells are coming down. Noble going for a very risky charge with the Phoenix into the Plague Priest. He's surrounded by his anti-large Council God who can do huge damage to these guys. But at this point, I was pretty con confident that the battle was mine. So I thought, well, I might as well just charge everything in and pin it down with Archery Fire. Move in my Spearman, pull back after I've done the nice charge in. 
We do have a time warp also pop down onto these spearmen and they should be able to mulch through this camp scarred fairly comfortably now. I think that is going to be game, so it should be game one to me, which I'm obviously very, very happy about. So, let's just fast forward now as it is going to be a matter of just these unbreakable troops slowly going down. 20 of them left and they're just slowly going down to sheer arrow fire and a very angry flaming pigeon there. So, very well played to my opponent that first game. I think what really turned it was uh, the early skirmish, managing to pick off a uh, quick head taker so early on, which was really good. Yes, Tyrion suffered a huge amount of damage, but once their leadership was gone, that Flames Fire Phoenix was just a menace in the night. So let's go have a little look at the end stats there. Now, as I said multiple times there, both of us were so good at managing to dodge those kind of big spells. However, the Mage of Life getting that big banishment which chased one of the units of Storm Vermin and basically made them useless. I'm assuming it's the one that only ended up getting 8 kills was such good value. And again, that early skirmish play with the Illyrian Reavers up to 128 kills with Tyrion and the Flameside Phoenix going round just allowed the Spearmen and Archers to do the simple job of slowly moving up, firing those arrows over top and slowly whistling down the Skaven forces. Now as you can see, uh, I actually quite like Ninja's army here. The Storm Vermin really caught me off guard. I don't see them too often, but the mass amount of elite troops could really have been a problem. They would have slowly torn through these spearmen, but luckily, with some big spells and some fire poops by the Flames Fire Phoenix, managed to just about carry the day. So that is going to be round one to me. And of course, this is a best of five. So let's get up the next match. So match number two is going to be me with Beastmen up against Ninja's Wood Elves. Now I've played him multiple times and he seems to quite like Wood Elves, so I don't know if they're his favourite faction or not. Um, but again, this is a pick and ban system. I think he picked Wood Elves and banned Dwarves, possibly. Can't quite remember, but we should see some very interesting builds coming in from him. And as you can see already, he's gone for a very tree-heavy build. So let's just slow this down as the battle is going to get underway very, very quickly. So for my army, in the front line, I do have the Blackhorn Ravagers mixed in with a load of Gore Herds with shields. These guys are all going to be chevroned up as well. They do okay against Dryads, not fantastic, but great against Eternal Guard. And they should be very useful at, you know, taking arrow fire and dealing a decent amount of damage back. Now up in the skies, we do have a unit of Harpies. And then for our very back line here, we have Tunas of the Razor Gore Herds. These guys are my anti-large option. They don't actually have anti-large, they're anti-infantry, but they have armor piercing and quite a lot of mass. They can pin in tree men and other forces like that. So there's the thinking behind those guys. We have a Brave Shaman of Death with Fate of Buna and Spirit Leech up on a chariot here. Going to be just trying to roll through some pointy-eared elves who should hopefully be nice and squishy. And for our Lordship, we do in fact have Morgo the Shadow Gave with all his Chaos Summons as he's just such a solid pick. Up in the air over here we have another unit of Harpies escorting a unit of Chaos Warhounds. And in the back we have some Vanguarded Centaurs, including the Sons of Goros, which is a regiment around great weapon variety. And in the back we have Tunes of Centaurs with throwing axes who have unfortunately appeared, well, perfectly behind the Glade Lord and a Dragon, who we think would be a great target, but they're very, very isolated. So my opponent has brought some very, very cool units. Up in the sky he has two Hawk Riders, who can actually do very comfortably with my Harpies. They're fairly good in combat, plus they can skirmish with their arrow fire. For his main line, he has gone for one, two, three, four units of Dryads, who will do very good against my front line. I am a Chevron Dop though, so it should be a fairly even fight. It should actually probably favour the Gore Herds, but they won't do bad, you know, they should pay for themselves. So four units of them along the front line. They're going to be accompanied by a Branch Wave, who looks like it does have the Pendulum, yep, Earth Blood, and the Wyvern. And in the back here, he has a tree man, someone I haven't seen too often. And he's just roaring to the sky in pure rage there, letting out a mighty bellow. And he's going to be accompanied by a Glade Lord up in the sky here. And let's see what she's brought, or he's brought, sorry. Now, it is the Lady Variety, so he's got Prevenarf Rama, um, Arrows of Kurnos, and of course, the Normal Breath of the Dragon. And then in deep reserve here, right behind my lines, we do have Wild Riders with shields, who are going to be a massive pain for me to deal with. They're very good at chasing down centers goals and so forth and they're going to be accompanying a very sneaky unit of waywatchers and i did not manage to spot these guys so i'm just going in headlong for a mad bloody rush so i instantly charge forward hoping there's gonna be lots of archers and whatnot i can chase down but instead i met with a big wall of trees and in the back of my centicles were trying to be a little bit sneaky i thought i might as well 
try and get some axes in there, but they have been caught by this dragon very early on, which is not a very good pick. So as you can see, we've got centaurs rushing over to try and rescue these guys and trying to force these guys around the dragon, but they couldn't do it. So I'm pulling them back, kind of getting them trapped in this corner, unfortunately. The initial charge has gone very well for my units. As you can see, we're doing a huge amount of damage to these dryads, and even the Razor Gauls have chucked themselves in the front line. I just want to break this dryad front line as quickly as possible so I then can isolate the tree men and the dragon on their own and then really try and do some damage. Bray Shaman rolling around the right hand flank here looking to get a nice flank charge trying to drag his chariot all the way down here but he's not, not going to get too much momentum coming down. It looks like a big fat pendulum is coming down the back horn. Ravage is just decimating those guys. Yes the dryads are nearly finished but that is not a good trade for me so very very nice cast there. Harpies are trying their best to pin down the Hawk Riders and protect these Centaur with throwing axes, but they're getting chased down all over the park. And this centre pocket of strength is going fairly good for me. I've managed to break one unit of Dryads, but now in comes the Deep uh, Vanguard as the Waywatchers are getting some nice rear attacks into some Gore Herds and the Wild Riders have arrived. So, Power Bounce is actually my favourite at this moment. We've completely shattered off one unit of Dryads and broken a separate unit. But there's some healing going down on the Glade Lord, who's now using his extra mobility just to pull himself out. And I've basically formed one giant wrecking ball of a blob. I've realised that my, my units are kind of getting chased down wherever they go. I'm doing not too bad skirmish against these Hawk Riders, but then these Wild Riders appear and they're going to be able to chase down my Sentinels with Throne Axes fairly comfortably. So our big blob has formed up now around this branch wraith and tree man. We've used the chaos summons just to try and get as much extra damage as possible but we're doing very little work and the glade lord with a fantastic breath attack there and getting some rear attacks into the back of these gore herds he's going to be able to break them very quickly. In the back line the brayshawn is doing some fantastic work just clearing up some dryads chasing them off the battlefield but my centaurs have been caught by those wild riders and they are going to get torn to pieces. In the back we do have our unit of hounds which we have completely forgotten unfortunately which could be fairly useful in the battle. Centaur with throne axes are actually managing to out skirmish these hawk riders and do some decent work but they're desperately trying to get back now, put them into combat mode to try and step on top of these way watchers. With harpies coming in as well the dryads are here for protection. I realised the Waywatchers were doing huge damage. As you can see, my army is constantly breaking, and that has left Morga very isolated. The Earthblood's going down on the Tree Man and on top of the Glade Lord, keeping them fighting. I don't have enough armour piercing at the moment, but the battle is not lost yet. The Power Bounce is, in fact, in our favour, and the Brave Shaman is desperately trundling his chariot over here, trying to rally these troops as quickly as possible so they can get back into the action. Now, I managed to hop on top of the Waywatch, my opponent very cleverly here swoops back in with his Glade Lord and Wild Riders and just clears up these units I have. Now, I've completely lost almost all of my mobility bar one unit of Centaurs with Throne Axes, who are just going to be constantly chucking the axes at this tree man. I'm trying to drag him down as quickly as possible, get rid of him and this hero while the rest of his army is distracted, but it is just going so, so slowly that tree man is so tanky. Eventually, I will remember the Chaos Warhounds if I uh, remember correctly and bring them back over to the battle. It looks like we did manage to rally most of the gore herds who are going to be popping on onto these dryads trying to finish them off. So the throne axes are slowly paying dividends here and pulling down this tree man but the centaurs and sons of Gorosan here are really struggling to have much of an impact. In fact they're even being beaten off by these tree men and there is now shots coming in from the very nasty way watchers who are up to a fairly decent 33 kills and also these hawk riders. So I'm taking that constant fire and my poem does the perfect move here so I've managed to rally some troops over here and get them into a decent situation so he just uses the extra mobility bring the wild riders bring the glade lord swoop them over here finish off these units get that free value ignore my main blob which is being pinned down by this tree man I've been sucked into this engagement I should be using my centaurs to chase down uh, way watchers deal with hawk riders and so forth but instead I've been forced into the central engagement stuck against this tree man and he's now using his extra ability to clear up my forces wherever he sees them again here I'm I'm desperately charged my centaurs into the tree man knowing they're going to get rear charged anyway just to try and get a little bit of extra damage onto the tree man and a bit of protection with the gore herds but the power bounce is now going heavily against me we've got some centaurs with thrown axes on top of the way watchers but way watchers aren't slouches in combat plus hawk riders getting in there with their ap attacks those centaurs are fleeing for the hills and we are just left with Morga, the Shadow Gave, the only beast man standing. The Glade Lord doing his dudes here, just chasing off these units, ensuring the Sons of Gorus don't come back. And he's in fact uh, dropping a Arrows of Kurnus as well into those Centaurs, ensuring they're gone. Finally, the Chaos Warhounds remember they're meant to be in battle and uh, instantly break. So very well played to my opponent there, and that is going to bring it to 1-1. 
So overall, really like Ninja's armor here, really caught me off guard with going for the heavy tree man build, plus the flyers to constantly do that extra damage against anything large I had brought. 174 kills on that Glade Lord is pretty damn insane. So very nice play overall, really picked apart my army, and unfortunately I just got sucked into that initial engagement. I saw some early success, tearing apart some of those dryads, so I was like, okay, I can break the lines, Surround the tree man, bring him down, hit him with throwing axes, hit him with razor gores. Once he's gone, then I can deal, you know, with the Glade Lord and the Wild Riders and the Archers and so forth. But I just didn't have enough punching power. I could not drag down that tree man. He was supported by Earthbloods and he just held so much of my army in place, allowing the Glade Lord to merely charge into the rear and tear out so many, so many of my units away. And he then just chased them down one after another. So that has brought this series level to one all. So let's get cracking onto the next one. And this is going to be me in charge of Norska up against my favourite Lizardmen. So I am in fact going to have to try and take down my own beloved forces. I am going to be led by Wolfric the Wanderer and my opponent is going to be led by Nakai the Wanderer. Someone I haven't seen too much of. And if I remember correctly this battle gets underway incredibly quickly. So we probably will pause when we pop in. And we are going to be on the standard tournament map of Elanguil. Which I've probably butchered that name, but it looks kind of Frenchy, so that sounds kind of Frenchy. So let's just pause this and have a little look over my battle. Or my army, sorry. So for the front line, I didn't really think we're going to be able to beat Bassaurus and so forth, so I've gone more heavy in the kind of supporting troops. At the front line, fairly small, we have a unit of Marauders, a unit of Marauders with great weapons, both chevroned up, some Marauder Champions, my one kind of elite infantry unit. I always forget how badass these guys look as well. Look at this geezer, big old ginger beard, tattoos, and a massive Warhammer, looking all very Baratheon. They're going to be there just trying to stabilise my kind of flimsy front line apart from this. Another unit of Marauders with great weapons, and one more unit of Marauders on the flank. So, not the worst front line, but I'm not expecting it to do too much if my opponent has gone very Saurus heavy. Now, in the back here, we do have two units of the Skin Wolves, both of them which are armoured, one of them being the Moors of Savagery, the regiment renowned unit. And look how badass these guys look. How can you not love werewolves? These guys are very cool overall. They have regeneration as well, so they're very good for a long, grindy fight. And they're armour piercing anti large. So, I'm going to be using these guys to try and counter big monsters. Now, over on the left hand flank, I have another unit of armoured Skin Wolves plus the Beasts of Tashna, which these guys catch a lot of people out as they are anti large themselves they see some hounds running up on them think they can deal with them with cavalry and so forth and these guys just tear lightly armored cavalry and so forth apart then the front line which you can see is instantly going to start engaging some skink skirmishers we have three units of marauder horse monsters these little guys are going to be throwing their javelins with quite decent accuracy and are again kind of being brought in to take down that anti-large troops get into the back lines and rear you know rear attack and so forth any more elite troops so that's it for the most part of my army, apart from my leadership. I have a Shaman Sorcerer of Death over here, who has in fact brought my standard pick of Fit of Bune and Spirit Leech, I think I've brought in every single game so far. If I go Death Magic, those two spells are really big favourites of mine. Now we also have Wolfric the Wanderer, only up on a pony here. He has brought all his buffs, including his very, very cool Sea Fang Viking ship. He's also got Fight to Die, Hunt of Champions, of course, and the Sword of Torgold. Trying to drop those two at the same time and get some really good assassinations underway. Let's have a look at my opponent's build, who's also gone for a very interesting build. His tunes are Skink Skirmishers, who are about to face the wrath of some Horse Masters. And for his main line here, he's gone fairly light on the infantry as well. Three units of Saurus Warriors with shields, um, led by a unit of Skink Cohort in the front, and in the back, he has two units of Red Crested Skink. So a nice mix of units there, fairly big in the infantry, but nothing too special. Leading this like little part of his army, he does have a Sora Scar Veteran up on top of his mighty Carnosaur here. Very good pick, coming to do huge damage to all my lords, especially if I had bought Frog. Uh, he has Deadly Onslaught, Foe Seek, and Cold Blooded. Then in the back and in reserve here, he has a unit of the Raised On Hunting Pack. Who I, I love these guys thematically, I love the way they look. I use them quite often, but I don't think they're the most competitive pick, but they will do pretty damn decent against the Horse Masters if they're allowed to shoot consistently. 
He also has a unit of the Sacred Croxagore, a unit I really need to use much more as they're very badass and they look incredibly cool and have some very nice attack animations. These guys do magic damage and are just absolute powerhouses and they're going to be led by Nakai the Wanderer, the ultimate Croxagore here, who looks like has brought all his buffs. Primal Roar, giving him that 22% physical resistance plus 44 melee attack to everyone in the area is very, very powerful. Also, Miasma of Despair, which is a very nice ability. So let's get this battle underway. So as you can see from the off, instantly some Throne Axes and Blow Darts exchange and fire there and we're straight away going to change into combat mode and try and hunt these guys down. Sending Skinks flying as our horses just start to run them over. So a nice early pick here for me. So chased off this unit on the right is already wavering, but the one on the left has a big Papa Sora Scarvet charging forward who's going to be able to deal very comfortably with these more horse masters. So I do pull them back. We've managed to break one unit on this right hand side doing a ton of damage to it. We're now going to try and pull back and skirmish this Sora Scar veteran as much as possible. And as you can see all his large entities are moving up while his main army is just sitting back. So what I do is I pull up all of my skin wolves, all my anti-large units that I can see there's about to be a huge skirmish fight here. I'm hoping my anti-large units plus my Marauder Horse Master should tear down this sort of Scarvet, Razor Dons and all these nice large targets here. So the Soros Scarvet does overextend a little bit but it's going to be falling back and uh, the Razor Dons are going to be moving up. So the Beast of Tashnar spot their target, instantly going to hunt onto these guys and start trying to eat and tear them apart as quickly as possible. But they do start to flee and there's a counter charge by the mighty Nakai the Wanderer who's just swinging that hammer all around in there. But we do have skin, uh, skin Wolves. All just sending three units onto Nakai the Wanderer now, trying to tear him down as quickly as possible. The Sacred Crocs Gold do not give a damn. They popped in here, Mansmith of Despair has gone down, and they're just beating the crap out of these beasts of Tashinar. In return, we're getting a nice few rear attacks with these Marauder Horse Masters, who are just cobying these javelins in, getting some really nice work on these Sacred Crocs Gold. So I do start to move up with the rest of my army now, uh, realizing that this frontline fight isn't actually going as well as I hoped. I thought the Skin Wolves would be able to pin the Kai and the Sacred Crocs go in and do some decent damage whilst these Mortal Horsemen supported. But as you can see, they've actually been beaten up pretty bad. And we've done a lot of damage to the Sacred Crocs Gore, but almost no damage to the Kai the Wanderer, which is a bit of a worry. So we do pull one unit of Skin Wolves into these game cohorts. That does separate my opponent's forces here. So okay, we bring all the Skin Wolves plus Wolfric over to this flank quickly, trying to dismantle the Sacred Crocs Gore as quick as possible. And the Kai, as you can see, is going to be wandering over. 100 champions is popped down on him as he's taken a load of um, javelin fire, but I couldn't get my forces over there that quickly whilst 100 champions is up. The skin wolves doing a decent amount of damage to him now, and the spirit leech has gone down as well. Saw a scarvich and trying to protect him. As you can see, the main battle lines are now finally closing. There's been this huge early uh, phase of the battle, really, where my skin wolves are taking huge damage, but they do have regenerations. So they should be able to pop in and out of the battlefield and regen up and come back stronger than ever. Uh, but they've taken a huge amount of losses right here. We're desperately trying to bring down the Kai the Wanderer, throwing axes into him. We have Wolfric on him, who's popped fight or die as well, trying to keep the Skin Wolves in the fight, who are currently terrified by the looks of it. Or, uh, yeah, they are terrified right there. But uh, the Kai is one running for the hills there, so we're going to try and chase him down with Wolfric and finish him off. There's not too much in the back line that could stop us. Well, at least I didn't think so. However, his Saurus uh, old Scarvetron is charging in now, and he blocks me in with some Red Crested Skinks. And as you can see, they just pinned down Wolfric. I realised my mistake. I had completely overextended here. Try forcing him out, but these Skink skirmishes are not letting him go. And the Kai is just clubbing the crap out of him now with this Saurus Scarvetron, and Wolfric is in a very dangerous situation. Situation. As far as the rest of the battlefield, let's have a little overview look. We do have Marauders chasing down some Razedons, which has basically put those guys offline, which is quite nice. The frontline battle is starting to go underway. Marauders of Great Weapons trying to charge in and assist these Skin Wolves who are routing. Uh, the Mar Marauders, Great Weapons and more Marauders are struggling up against Saurus Warriors in the middle. So overall, battle's not going too great, but we do have some Marauder Champions in the backline here who can charge in. And we still have a decent amount of ammo on these Marauder ho Horse Masters. Mores of Savagery are just going to be healing up in the background here as well, so they should be able to swing in. And we still have a very healthy Shaman Sorcerer of Death, who I believe is going to be dropping down a uh, Fated Bunit on a Saurus Warrior unit, which normally isn't a very good target, but there wasn't too many good targets on the battlefield. 
So it looks like I do drop another Spirit Leech on the Kai the Wanderer, trying to drag him down. But Wolfric, I overextended him and I have paid the price in full. Very good capitalization there by my opponent. And there's no way he's escaping all these skinks and this sort of Scarvet. So I knew he was out of the battle. And I do have a unit of Marauders who have also uh, also overextended up here. But the skink skirmishers have gone into Rampage because of Nakai's ability. And they've charged into combat with them. So the Marauders are now going to tear apart those little skinks very quickly. It's not too bad of a situation. Now the front line you can see, I have managed to push through with the help of the Moors of Savagery. We've completely, or we've started to rout some Crocs, there's only two of those guys left though, so they shouldn't be too much of a problem. We've managed to rout one unit of Saurus Warriors as well, but we are incredibly beat up. Power balance is, the, however, still even. Beast of Tashnar in the back will be coming back to the battlefield, and some more Skin Wolves are just healing up. So staying out of the battlefield isn't the worst situation for them. The Deadly Onslaught has been popped on the Saurus Scar Veteran, trying to get onto my last little strands of leadership there, as he does instead pop into some skin cohort before trying to run and rally away here. We do have some Moors of Savagery running to his aid, trying to isolate this Saurus Scar Veteran, as Nakai is over here, doing decent damage to these Marauders, but in return is taking constant uh, javelins in from these Marauder Horse Masters. We're doing some very decent work on him here. He is just down now to 550 health, so not too much there. More the horse monsters are going to have to pull back, though, however, as these skink skirmishers will tear them apart. So fairly even battle at the moment. Marauders doing going to do fairly decent against Saurus Warriors, but not not great. Whereas over on this left flank, two units of the uh, well, one Maws of Savagery and one Skin Wolves have rallied with my elite Marauder champions. We've dropped another Spirit Leech down on this Saurus Scarvet, and we're slowly dragging him down. He's trying to force his way out, but some of these very brave Werewolves have managed to pin him in, and we're getting loads of nice rear attacks on him. We're also very quick, and we should be able to chase him down and do huge damage here. Even the Shaman Sorcerer is getting in there. Another unit of Skin Wolves pops up. All of these guys are healing this whole time and it looks like cold blood has been popped but we have managed to rout the Saurus Scarvich which is a huge victory here. Two Sacred Crocs do come back to the battlefield but you know they're going to break very quickly there's only two of them left and they are incredibly beat up. In the main engagement, we are having to now cycle charge from all the horse masters, just whipping in and out, trying to hop on top of these red crested skinks and send them flying. As we are now running out of ammo, we do now pop onto this right hand side with some all the horse masters, trying to chase down these raised on hunting packs and skink skirmishers and just get that nice easy value. Now there's nothing over here to protect them. So Nakai is incredibly beat up, trying to get over here to save his Saurus Scarvetron, but he's not the quickest of fellows, and uh, the Saurus Scarvet, it looks like it's going to get escorted off by my Shaman Sorcerer of Death there. The main fight though, there is still a big block of Lizardmen here, and a fairly big block of Red Crested Skinks and Skirmishers as well. We've now got the Maws of Sagittary chasing down the now broken Nakai the Wanderer. Look how awesome these guys are when they move and they kind of loop towards the enemy and they're not going to let him out of their sight. They will tear him up to pieces. We have a ton of units now rallying now that the Power is so heavily in our favour and these Mortar Champions are just being brave and holding this massive Lizardman tied back, doing decent damage while I pick apart these units. Now somehow, I still have no idea how this worked, but the Saurus Scar Veteran, even though he's being chased down by the Shaman Sorcerer, does in fact rally. Maybe the uh, Colonel Sword got a little bit tired of running away and thought, hmm, it's only one man and a pony. We'll get on there, and as you can see, he does some huge damage early on, but I do manage to escape with the Shaman Sorcerer. As you can see by that symbol, the Maud Savagery, Savagery did finish off Nakai the Wanderer, but he did drop Mansman Despair, so it looks like he did rally as well and at least fight to the death. Maud Savagery now going to be looping out of the forest and coming over to rescue this Shaman Sorcerer. Looks like the Beast of Tash and I also have a similar idea, and I'm going to be hunting down this, shame, this uh, Sora Scarvich and the Sorcerer simply runs away. Now the Marauder Champions, completely isolated here, fighting back to back against the hordes of Saurus Wars with shields, mixing with Red Crystal Skinks, but overall up to 86 kills is very solid and they're just distracting these guys while the rest of my army does rally in the peripheries of the battlefield here and we're just chasing down Skink Skirmishers wherever we can, hunting down Red Crested Skinks and so forth. Now, as you can see, the Saurus Scarvich did try and pop another little bit of a fight. Might have dragged down one or two more doggos, but unfortunately for him, he's going to get escorted off the battlefield. He's routing, and these guys are the ultimate hunters. You know, they're not going to let this guy rally at all, and they're simply going to escort him off the battlefield here. And with that, the power balance is now hugely in my favour. We're trying to chase down these Red Crested Skinks before they rally with their main forces. So we are charging in their rear there with some Marauder Horse Masters, who are okay in combat. You know, they've got their big old spears. Um, 
Did some decent damage to Red Crest of Skinks, but now the Saurus Scarvation has gone. That is going to be army losses, and the entire Saurus army does in fact rout. So a very close Pyrrhic victory to the Norskins there, making it 2-1 to me. So I was incredibly happy with this battle. Uh, as I said before, I was very rusty coming into this. So when I took that first loss, I was really worried. And then I lost, I overextended with Wolfric very early on. It's like, oh god, I need to get the rest of my army up there and support him. And as, as soon as he died, just realised, okay, just let him go. It's completely fine. We still have the mobility here to pick apart this army of our model horse masters. We still have the more savagery and skin wolves who are going to be healing up this whole time. We have, you know, the staying power that we can actually drag this fight out and try and pick apart my opponent's army, which we managed to just about do. Managed to isolate the Sora Scarvichan, taking him out, and then uh, isolating Kai the Wanderer, getting all those Thronax kills in. Then the Marauder Horse Masters actually getting some really good combat kills as well, chasing down Skink Skirmishers and just getting nice rear charges into the main blob of my opponent's force. Overall went for a very solid build. Um, the Kai Wanderer don't think he's overly competitive but it's always nice to see him. And um, my opponent actually used him really well there so I had a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, Sacred Croc score did 21 kills which doesn't look crazy but they actually beat the crap out of some skin wolves turning a very advantageous advantage for me all of a sudden into a massive disadvantage my skin wolves are getting hammered my marauder horse monsters just weren't doing enough damage i couldn't take down uh nakai the wanderer the clock score plus the saurus scarfet all in one blob if i had isolated them like i did later on much much easier so it is now 2-1 in this best of five series let's see how it goes on So up we go to here, which is going to be me in control of my favourite Lizardmen up against Ninja's High Elves. So as you can see, I'm going to be led by the mighty Krokgar here on Alpine Ridge. Very awesome map, one of my favourites. Up against, it looks like just a basic noble. Well, I don't think any noble can be uh, classed as basic, but we'll uh, line up and see what the armies look like. So we're going to slow down straight away and have a little view. So I have gone incredibly light with my uh, infantry. to sank I do now and again with Lizardmen. Sometimes I go Massaurus or Temple Guard. But this time we've gone for some Skink Cohorts, Red Crest of Skinks, one more unit of Skink Cohorts and one more unit of Red Crest of Skinks. Just four units of Skinks is holding my main line together. And that's because I feel High Elves deal really struggle against large units. Yes, they have tons of Spearmen, Phoenix Guard who are anti-large and so forth, but they're quite slow. You can push through them with large entities and they can't pin them down too easily. So, for our big old dinos, we do have a Basildon with a Rev Crystal, which is really key when you've brought so many big dinosaurs. Because we have the Thunderous One, who has a huge HP pool there of 7,421. Causes terror, drops thunderbolts from the sky. Very, very awesome unit and can really do with the help of that healing. We have Krokgar up on top of Grimlock here, the mightiest of all Carnosaurs and goodest of boys. He has, of course, brought all his buffs, including the Hand of the Gods, which can do some huge, huge damage. Say if someone's brought like a Healing Lord and they've put him on an Eagle or so forth, you can just beam them with so much damage. So he's going to be leading the forces today. Over on the left-hand flank, we do have two units of Cold One Spear Riders, just here to help deal with any Cav or any Anti-Large in general. Them, supported by Krogar, should you know, be able to handle a lot of uh, enemy Cav. Up in the high ground as well, just peeping up top to shine their vision, we do have two units of Chameleon Skinks. Very good unit overall. They have huge missile resistance. One of the ultimate skirmishers. Really hard to catch as they do poison you. And these guys actually look really freaking awesome with their huge tongues. I believe they actually have an animation. There we go, where they stick out their tongue and like catch a fly. So very cool overall there. Now let's have a little look at my opponent. He has also gone fairly light on the infantry with four units of spearmen in the front line trying to protect an eagle claw bolt for who is going to struggle a little bit with line of sight but if I do want to claim that hill and get the high ground it is going to be able to pop off some shots. There's also some sword masters of Hoef in the back here standing like absolute badasses. This guy thinks he is the shit. Look at this guy. He looks like an absolute gangster. There he goes closing his hands round his blade. These guys will be able to tear through Saurus very very quickly. Luckily I do not have any. Now, hidden in the trees, he does have a unit of Fireborn, which are the Regiment Round Dragon Princes, plus a standard unit of Dragon Princes, so very heavy cav here, easily going to be able to beat the crap of my Cold One Spear Riders, but with Grimlock and a few other fins chucked in there, maybe some healing, they may end up struggling. There is also a Mage of Shadows here, which I believe this is the second Mage of Shadows he's bought in this best of five, so he is uh, clearly quite a big fan. Has brought Pit of Shades, uh... 
Mind Razor there, which is a spell I don't often actually see, and uh, the Wyverence is very cool, and his basic noble, or prince, sorry, is in fact going to be up on top of a mighty dragon here, looming over the battlefield, going to be trying to get in there with a little pointy sword, which going to be really hard to actually hit anything on the back of a dragon with a sword, but I'm sure he will try his best. Let's get this battle underway. Well, I forgot to mention, I also have a Skink Priest of Heavens up on a Pterodon here, with Wind Blast, Harmonic Convergence, and um, Curse of the Midnight Wind. So, getting some nice early shots onto the Prince, doing some decent damage. He has no healing in his army, so every little bit of damage counts. Bolt for a desperately trying to hit the Skink Priest, and actually getting a pretty decent contact there. We do move up to try and secure the high ground here, and we've now spotted these Fireborn. So, we were moving up our Cold on Spear Riders to uh, protect the Chameleon Skinks from any nasty dragon you know, surges he does. We bring these guys back down and move Grimlock, uh, Grimlock sorry, and uh, Krokgar uh, over to the side to try and fend off those very nasty Dragon Princes. So he's trying to sit back in a defensive position, getting in those shots with the Eagle Claw Boat Thrower, but he doesn't have too many good targets. Our dinosaurs are hidden behind this hill, and it looks like there is going to be a big engagement underway. Uh, Krokgar is moving up, but we do manage to scare off the Fire One at least initially, and our very sneaky Skink Priest here is flying over to try and get a very nice and tasty Wind Blast down. Those bolts coming down and missing Krokgar. I'm assuming he's in position now, but I see my opponent has moved his army forward, so I can't do my Wind Blast just yet, as I want to try and guess where he is. Chameleon Skink's just moving up to try and get a pair of poke on the Fireborn here. So early, kind of cagey opening battle here, of course, he doesn't want to risk it all. This could be his last chance to stay in the best of five. And uh, as you can see, in comes the Wind Blast, instantly getting those guys down to half health, and the second unit as well below half health, doing huge damage to those guys all along the front line, and that's really going to help my Skink's over overwhelm this front line super quickly. So knowing that I've dealt with them quite nicely, the Chameleon Skinks have popped up, just getting a few little shots, it looks like into the Mage of Shadows here, just doing a little bit of free damage and trying to harass and annoy my opponent, so he forced him to come into a big charge, but we've now moved the Thunderous One over here as well, we're going to try and get all our big dinosaurs, plus our anti-large Colwyn Spear Eyes to take this engagement. A Hand of the Gods does go blitzing and hits that Prince with some pretty decent effect, but our Chameleons, I'm a little bit slow on the counter charge here, do get charged by the Dragon Princes, but they don't stay to do too much damage, instead fleeing. But our Cold One Spearoids continue to charge, getting that nice downhill charge, pinning off a couple of Dragon Princes here and isolating them. Which is kind of going initially quite well, but I then try pulling back a little bit too slow and get a, rear, a uh, flank charge coming in from the Dragon Princes. Looks like the Dragon's even contemplating coming in here as well. And there's also going to be a spell popped down, I'm assuming a pitch of shades on the Cold One Spear Rider. So Grimlock, uh, Krokgar riding Grimlock, so he does also go charging in. And so does the Thunderous One trying to rescue this situation, which is now a bit of a struggle. Even some skinks are popping up. My opponent does a nice idea here, so what he does is he's distracted all my kind of anti-large force over here. So what you see he's trying to do is basically do what I did where you kind of blitz that front line and make it a bit useless. He uses the dragon to hop onto some red crested skinks where normally he'd be able to tear them apart very quickly. But I've managed to poison him and slow him down with chameleon skinks. And now Krokgar who's popped deadly on the slot is going to be able to pop onto him and do some huge rear damage there. Instantly getting that prince down to about half health. And he is just taking bullet after bullet now. We managed to rescue those Red Crystal Skinks with not too much of a loss. We are now having to pull out the Cold One Spear Riders who did some damage but obviously traded very poorly there and took some huge shots early on. However, now my opponent's front line has been pushed forward and very quickly deleted because of the Wind Blast. I've now managed to get my big dinos on top of this Eel Claw Bolt Thrower and it is just going to get torn apart and it certainly hasn't been able to pay for itself. But still done with Revcrest, so we're just getting in there and doing its work against the Spearmen. Yes, they're anti-large, but I don't have much armour piercing. And I can sense a big engagement coming here again on my Lord of these Dragon Princes. So we do force the Cold One Spear Riders up and through this main battle line, trying to get some rear attacks in onto these Fireborn, who do have the Mine Razor popped on them. But in come the Cold Ones, trying to get those nice rear attacks. They didn't actually end up doing too much damage. And the Dragon does take a very risky pick here. Hopping in, trying to help and support these spearmen, but maybe a little bit premature of the charge, as Krokgar is an absolute monster of a combatant. And as you can see, we do drop Curse of the Midnight Wind as well, and with that, Thunderous One comes in with a massive flanking charge on these Swordsmasters, sending them flying. We have managed to break off 
the Prince who is very bloodied now. And in the back line, all these spearmen that have been destroyed and we force our opponent into a pit fight. We're going to be pinning him with anti-large cold on spear riders to help with the dragon princes. And then just mass amount of skinks. All that damage does add up. A hand of the gods, 360 no scope does take down the prince there from Krokgar who turned away from the combat. You know, these swords masters, they deserve his back. They don't deserve to face him head to head. He spins around and blitz him with the hand of the gods. Now a very skinky and uh, skinky, very sneaky and useful skink priest has hopped in the back here and has completely shut off this mage and eagle claw bolt throw. And with that, it is going to be a victory to the lizard men with a nice close victory there, which is going to mean I do take this series three one up against Ninja, who was a very very good opponent. Now, overall. These were two very interesting builds. He was putting a lot of weight onto those dragon princes and um, the prince to really kind of carry the day. You know, the spearmen not going to do too much. Sword masters would have been very good if I'd bought um, you know, mass swords, which the spearmen would have struggled with. So overall, I don't mind that pick at all. And the little goon squad rolling around with the mage, dropping the buff uh, on top of the prince and the dragon prince to try and just delete units in one go is a very viable tactic. But I suppose I took a fairly off-meta pick here, bringing just like cheap and cheerful skinks who did, you know, they did their job. They did what they needed to do and with the support of the skink priest who only got 29 kills but did so much HP damage. With um, his support, the skinks just rolled over that front line. I could then easily hop on top of the bolt thrower, making it pretty much useless with only four kills. And then it was just the dragon princess, which we could drag down with numbers. As you can see, my cod on spear riders got pretty beat up and got caught out once or twice. But overall, did a fairly decent job. And with Krokgar looming around and the thunderous one up to 43 kills, we managed to just grind out those dragon princes in the end. But overall, thank very big uh, shout out to Ninja for playing me. Really nice. I wanted to get back into playing. I haven't played in quite some time, so it was nice to have a few games in a row against someone. And this is going to be, I believe, the second of our best of five series. We did have one before. And from now on, we are going to try and stream them in future. But this one, I've been having a few internet issues uh, recently. My internet has been a bit dodgy and cutting in and out. So I didn't want to stream just in case we did have those problems. So hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, please do leave a like, subscribe, and all that good fun stuff. And if you want to support the channel in any other way, I do in fact have a Patreon, so you can find that in the link down below. If you become a Patreon member, you can then recommend what uh, for me to play next. You can play against me, you can do whatever and suggest whatever you want. So uh, do that if you fancy. If not, just you can support the channel by liking, subscribing, all that good stuff, telling your mates, telling your mum to watch this. Um, just load up for her and play it and uh, explain as you go along. I'm sure they'll all love it. So until next time, guys, peace, peace, stay awesome.